February 3rd, 2022. 2.17 p.m. Poudre Creek. It's a scrub jay. But I am in the thicket next to the river. I said the creek. And I am hearing some kind of owl. Definitely two of them. One is hooting. One sounds like it's cooing. <laughs> I have no idea if there is a difference. I really hope you can hear that. Because that sounds amazing. So, I'm standing next to this river in hopes that if I follow their hoots, if I follow their calls, if I follow the sound, I can get as close as possible. But it sounds like they're very high, and in fact, it even sounds like they're on the south side of the creek, which is, of course, private. It's a privately owned piece of land. Uh, we'll see how close I get to it. Right now, I feel very warm. It's a nice sun, sunny ray beaming down on me. I think there are, let's see what the weather is. The weather is maybe, it's six, no, it's in Berkeley. Right now in Davis, it is 57 degrees. Uh, somewhat cloudy, but it's sunny right now. Wind is calm, though I am in the middle of the creek. So... That's going to be it. Let's try to get it one more time. Poudre Creek Riparian Reserve out in Davis, California. That is where I am. And I am recording on a Sunday, April 22nd, 2024. And it is a great day to be outside, as you can tell by the people chatting, the dogs barking. And also, we got some change in video quality from what had just been shown just now. The reason is I spent a lot of time recording B-roll, going kind of gung-ho with the camera because nature is awesome, right? Nonetheless, I didn't think I was gonna be out here long enough to need another battery. So I've gone ahead and switched over to my phone, which is also on the verge of losing its battery power. So let's go ahead and see if I can get through this in a very adequate and brief way. I'm out here in the wild and let's get started. Why bird watch? That's the question that I'm gonna try to answer here in this video. Now, the way I'm gonna begin this quest to find an answer is by telling a story of my wild owl sighting and the way it goes is this. I was walking Remy, my dog, here at Poudre Creek, and we were on the levee already, going back to my car, which was around 3 o'clock p.m. It was kind of a cloudy day. And then all of a sudden, I start hearing, hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. And then I thought, is that a dove? Because I feel like it's a little too early for it to be an owl. Too early in the day, that is. And as I got closer, the sound kept on going. And then I noticed that there was another kind of sound similar to that going off after the first has gone off. So it'd go, hoo 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 hoo, hoo 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 hoo, hoo following, <laughs> I'm over here making bird sounds in the middle of the forest. Uh, nonetheless, I'll go ahead and play the recording that I was actually able to get on my phone. Now, I knew for a fact that it wasn't a dove at that point because it sounded too similar to an owl. And I had done research before moving to Davis about what kind of birds I'd be able to see. 
and owls were sighted throughout the city limits of Davis. And I thought, this is it. This is my chance. This is finally going to be the moment where I get to scratch off, see wild owl out in the wild off my bucket list of bird watching. So the quest continued on. I knew though that the owl would be across the creek. As you can see, the creek is down here. And then down that way is the other side, which is privately owned property, which is I think maybe a farm. Nonetheless, they have tall trees there. I don't know what kind they are. And I just knew the sound was coming from there. So if I couldn't get as close as possible in terms of right under it, I thought I could at least get right in front of it. So I tried to triangulate the location of the owl just by listening to it. I would stop every five minutes or so, take a beat, wait to hear it, then continue on. And then I finally got to a point where I was just right off course. And then of course, I course corrected myself and got right in front of it. So you can imagine I was sitting right there, looking up, scanning up and down the trees, side to side, trying to figure out where the owl was. But the problem is I couldn't see it. I didn't have a long enough lens and I also didn't have binoculars. So I sat there for a good 20 minutes probably. And I ended up texting Akeen, who's my partner, and I was telling her, oh, I think I'm gonna see an owl. And I was just going back and forth with her as I went back and forth to the trees. And at 20 minute mark, I basically said, I can't do this anymore. This is, this is gonna take me too long. I'm not gonna be able to see this owl. So I submit defeat, submit, I admit defeat and submit myself to the loss. And I text that to Akeen. And then the minute I look up, I see something move in the tree line. And then to my surprise, it was some kind of like fuzzy, big looking bird. Eyes were glowing as it was looking right at me. And then I knew it was an owl. It was actually a great horned owl to say the specific kind it was. And it was looking straight at me and I thought, oh my God, I finally get to see a wild owl out in the wild. And I got my camera. I got the lens that I had that was best. Not the best, but best for me at the time. Zoomed in all the way. Started zooming in on the picture that I took. And confirmed. Great owl. And uh, yeah, it was a great sight. And it's not the best photo. In fact, here, let me show you. This is not the best composed or well exposed photo. There's a lot of foliage in front of the owl and I'm pretty far away. But I have two reasons why I love this photo so dearly. The first reason being that it marks a milestone in my bird watching hobby. It has been a long standing sight that I've been wanting to see ever since I started bird watching back in 2020. And I've always had the mentality of, I want to see as many species, as many different species as I can. Kind of on the tip of a Pokemon mentality, as in I need to catch them all. I need to see them all. But I've always had in the back of my mind this desire to see a specific species, and in this case, it was an owl. I didn't want to see them out in a zoo, nor a conservatory for raptors or anything of this sort. I wanted to see it out in the wild, which brings me to reason number two. Bird watching is a way for me to get outside, out in nature, out in the wild. And that very act in itself is a reason why I love bird watching. I think of it as a sort of performance. Some people might see a bird, I might see a bird and I might read them in a way of taking notes of their physical characteristics or their behavior and then I go into a guidebook or the internet and then I try to identify them. And all their definitive aspects, I know this bird so well. But the truth of the matter is I don't because there's just so much more that I can learn. And I attribute it to the idea of sometimes birds, they get named a spe specific species but then they get renamed 
and sometimes they may even move from one genus to another. And there has been instances where a kind of behavior is misunderstood and then it turns out that that behavior is something totally different. Now this happens over a long period of time, but it's that idea of re-understanding what we think that we know that's so exciting to me because that's just a renewal of a relationship between myself and nature. That means that everything I do outside in nature is new. And it's just so exciting to me because I feel like I end up having a far greater relationship with nature. I start to try to understand it better because of this. And what's more exciting is the performance of not only watching the birds do their thing, but trying to get as close as possible without uninterrupting them or without interrupting them and without having them never want to come back to this environment ever again. It's that ability to, I don't want to say sneak, but coexist with them that really matters to me. And it kind of brings me to the idea of bird watching being a very particular outdoor activity for me that is more than just recreational. It's a way for me to bridge that recreational desire with a scientific curiosity. You bring those together, and for me, it makes the sublimity of nature, the sublime experience that the Romantics would talk about, a lot more worthwhile because it's not me just idolizing or idealizing what nature ought to be. It's what nature already is, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. What I'm trying to get at is it helps me understand nature as it is rather than me trying to think of it any other way in some kind of romantic way you know like the wind whispering to me the wind does not whisper it just goes but above all i bring up the topic of bird watching because it's a matter of me to get outside as i keep explaining and if my attempt to coax you into doing so does not get you outside there's always different methods of getting outside in the first place. I like rock climbing, riding my bicycle, hiking, camping, going out with friends. I walk my dog every single day. So there's different methods to going outside. And I hope that bird watching becomes one of them because it's more than just the recreation, of course. It's about building a better understanding of how the natural world works. And yeah. I think that's all I wanted to say. I've been going over and over this part of the video. I think I might just be out of it because I went from outside to having my camera die to having my phone camera die, thankfully in a good talking segment. And then now I'm trying to pick it all up back here at home in my dwellings. It's kind of hard to get back into that mindset, but I just wanted to try to make something worthwhile with this video with this YouTube channel because my last video was kind of on a different level but despite the hiccup I've got this done hopefully the next one you'll still tune in I know I won't be having this mistake again and if I didn't explain well enough to get you outside at least the visuals did I hope so that being said hopefully I see you out there be safe until then, see you out in the wild.